Welcome to Stories from the River, a show in which we go behind the scenes at Broad River Retail. Welcome back to Stories from the River. I'm here with Bill Woodman, a first time guest on the podcast, our executive vice president of finance at the river. Bill, welcome. Oh, thank you, Charlie. I know you've tried to get me here before and it's just, uh, we couldn't get our schedules lined up, but here I am. So glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. Well, I know you've been busy crunching those numbers from a record setting year last year. Oh man. And and we're going to have to move your nickname up from million dollar bill to billion dollar bill. (laughs) And, uh, anyways, Bill, we joke, uh, welcome. Hey, we wanted to talk about the word elevate. You know, we do a word of the year each year. We've got our our, we're, we're flanked by our Elevate swag and our mugs, and you know, we've got Elevate shirts coming out. Yeah. So why do you like the word Elevate for in 2023? Well, I think it sets the table for us. Uh, it's, you know, it inspires us to, to reach higher levels and not to be just content, you know, mm-hmm. after such a wonderful year, right? Yeah. I like to say, you know, sometimes... To, the biggest impediment to tomorrow's success is today's success. Right. Complacency can set in. Mm-hmm. So you like the word elevate in general, and then you think it's right for right now for Broad River, in spite of what we're hearing about. Like answer, like talk to the fact that we're going into. People say we're going into a recession. There's rising interest rates. There's a slowdown in housing. There's fears over a, a bank banking collapses. Things that we've seen, uh, and all uh, you know, traffic declines and et cetera, et cetera. They've been predicting a recession for ten years now or something. So what? How? Why is Elevate right for right now? Well, I think you know it. It helps us. You know, I, I like to go back. You know, we, we've had a, a a history, Charlie. Right. We've had a history, you know, 2015, we had ERP issues and, and, but we have a very uh, determined and, and gritty uh, group of, of managers and, and, and leaders that don't give up. And, you know, we look at this year, but look at COVID in 2020, right? The, the sky was falling, right? The world was falling apart. It, it was a catastrophe. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was, it was just, you know, Armageddon. It was kind of hitting, right? But we, we dug in and we, we pushed through. So we just went through all of that and really came out with some real successful years. I mean, unimaginable, really. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so now we, we're facing again, right? But we can't, we can't rest on our laurels. We we got to continue to move up because that's that's our DNA. That's who Broad River is. We, we've the, you hit on so many themes there. So Bill joined us in mid 2015 when we were through a, yeah. a season through one of our fires that we uh, yeah. reflect back on. Helped us dig out of that fire and in 2015 mm-hmm. became our you know I think the word of the year that year in retrospect was grit. You just mentioned mm-hmm. then it was right. believe in 2016, impact in 2017, right. premiere in 2018 purpose in 2019 united in 2020 another armageddon tough really tough year Um, forward together in 2021 thrive in 2022 and 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 through all those seasons we've exceeded our budgets we've hit our numbers and we've excelled and so i think what you're saying is hey we never we've not been one to rest on our laurels and this management team is a gritty group that continues to push forward and raise the bar so what does it mean you've continued to raise the bar for us in finance since you've joined us uh, and put in so many programs and I know you like to call it predictable, predictable financial results, yes. which, which we've done. So with your team and how your team is set up, what does elevate mean within finance and the fa- finance department for 2023? Well, it means to, to have a growth mindset. You know, we, we've talked about that last year a little bit in some of our management meetings and, and uh, it, it's to continue to build and to grow, you know, and I'll divert a little bit is that these words of the year, they, they ingrain into who we start to become and do become as we go through. So all those words of the year that you just described, it, 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 it initi- initiates itself and, and, and permeates within who you are as an individual. Mm-hmm. The culture does that. And I think these words are really meaningful and all those words that you talked about, you know, we still talk about premier and United mm-hmm. and purpose and all these things that forward together and all of that, that came together, but it, it kind of makes us who we are. And so this word elevate for my team, my, my group 
is to continue to have that growth mindset to continue to reach for their dreams and the company's dreams. Well, well Bill, I, I just got to brag on you for a second. You know, <laughs> b b before your arrival, I think we had a, a, a sieve of, of we, we weren't getting all the money from our financing providers. We fixed that. We were failing at our ERP. We fixed that. It's humming along nicely. We didn't have a 101 page or 100 plus page budget book. We do now. It's world class. <laughs> we didn't have quarterly uh, forecasts or not really ones that we trusted and believed. We, we do now. We, and we've gotten all these financial optics and we didn't have a policy committee. You helped us put in place a policy committee and yes. great company government governance. We didn't have chat bots. So, uh, you know, and, and all that, we didn't have inventory integrity like we have now across, across the board. So, and, and you've just implemented, I believe a leader's handbook that you, you took some of the, the leaders into the finance department. Aren't you doing a leadership lesson with your, uh, leaders on the finance team? Yeah. Um, it's been great that you and, and Broad River have been really focused in on management development mm -hmm. and you had provided me and some of the other leaders with a handbook from a company called Venture Source. And this was back in May of 22. Mm -hmm. And I held on to that because there's some really good nuggets in there. Mm -hmm. And so I took that and I, I took portions of it and, and edited through it to make it purposeful for my group mm -hmm. and put it into two parts. And one was to, you know, manage yourself first. And, and you can't manage others unless you know how to manage yourself. Yeah. And then the second part was managing managing others and uh did two two hour sessions and uh it really came through very meaningful um and and that's one of the things i wanted to do there one of the things for me to elevate our group is yeah. to do a lot of teaching learnings and all that and one of the things that i learned and and i have this phrase that i, I it was very profound for me in my career was they can who believe they can mm -hmm. And so I'm asking my managers and my supervisors and my staff to believe in themselves because they can mm -hmm. if they if they believe. I love it. Yeah. So Bill, when you let's peel the layers back on more of the initiatives in the finance department this year, what are some of maybe the things that are like tough to believe that that you think, hey, we really can do this, or that you're going to pursue at an elevated level in within your department in 2023? Yeah, our our department, you know. <laughs> We're made up of five very distinct groups, you know. Okay, let's t tell us about these five groups. Yeah, so of course everybody thinks of well, general accounting, right? And that's we got some great people, Howe Yang and Sarah Callahan mm -hmm. and Julie Hodge and all that. But then we have Hope Stalkers Group, retail accounting, very different animal over there. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a, a budding superstar in in Bonnie uh, Couch, who's our cost accountant and now supervisor of cost accounting. We're mm -hmm. trying to build that up. And uh, so that's a whole different animal, too. And then, of course, I can't forget Therese Lavalley and her group of, of inventory auditors that's really making a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm so, so proud of them. Um, and of course, then we have our accounts payable group mm -hmm. and, and a April Whitener. And what a, you know, we, we just got so many. So they're very specialized, different mm -hmm. groups that, that come together and make it Retail happen. accounting, cost accounting, inventory auditors, accounts payable. And general accounting. And general accounting. That's, and, and all those roll up under finance. So, so then within those departments of finance, how, what are you excited about or what are you looking to elevate this year? Well, we've been pushing for a couple of years now with Wells Fargo, but we're going to be rolling. I'm very excited about this. We're going to be rolling out the replacement of our corporate uh, card expense reporting, which yeah. is we call Caesar, okay? And I know it's it's um, a legacy situation where we'll be rolling out something, you know, just state of the art, like Concur and all those, where mm -hmm. it's gonna make it much more user-friendly. This is gonna happen in April. We That's haven't awesome. announced it yet, so here you go. Okay. <laughs> you guys all know now. Yeah, okay. Uh, but we we got a project plan in place and it's gonna be super exciting. Uh, potential also is for uh, personal expenses where you know, I've been wanting this for years to, to deposit straight to your personal bank accounts instead of going through manual checks. Yeah. So, so we're all getting engaged with that. That That's one that's that's right on the edge right okay. here. That hits like the memory maker experience and, and 
innovation and financial, some of these it, pil pillars and cornerstones it, that we have for this year. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I have to say another one real quick is, you know, uh, Therese and her group, we, we launched the uh, audit program for retail last year. Mm -hmm. And we worked with operations for the last six, eight months to really kind of get that piece up. But now we're launching, starting in April again, our audit program for the DCs. And mm -hmm. this is to really help partner with them to uh, identify opportunities to improve even more, but yeah. also too, we're certifying with our CPA firm so we can exempt physical inventories with our DCs. I mean, that, wow, that's yeah. that would be impressive. Uh, we've done that with several of our stores now, right? We, we, we have, we have. As a matter of fact, I'd say uh, we did, we did phys have physicals for about half of them last year, but we were able to exempt over half last year. And Bill, for those who may not know, when does the annual budget process begin? <laughs> well, you know, traditionally it does kick off in July. It kicks off in July. It's, <laughs> it's an early, you know, there's some early ones. Maybe I've heard some guys say May or June, but I don't know that I want to go any earlier than July. No, no. It's an early start. And it's, uh, uh, and then I'm so proud. I know you are as well. The, the finished output that helps guide and navigate us, you know, I think profit is oxygen and those financial optics help you steer the ship, fly the plane at the right latitude, longitude, airspeed, wind speed, et cetera. So Bill, as leaders, you talked about, you know, leading yourself or managing yourself first. And so, you know, as leaders, we have to go first. So let me just ask you personally, how are you looking to exemplify this word elevate in your own life? Yeah, that's, that's a hard one, Charlie. I mean, <clears throat> when we came out with the word elevate, and, and since then, my, my focus has really been on my staff, my people, and my family for a lot of different things going on. And, but I, I sat back, you know, when that question came up and I had to think about it and say, well, you know, I, I like to continue. I, I just naturally push myself mm -hmm. every a day. I try to elevate every day. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was thinking about, well, what am I going to do? It's not nothing special. I want to continue, but I do want to, you know, push more of myself and give more of myself to my people. That's great. Well, I love that. Elevate every day. That's a, that's, that's a great right. phrase. Bill, any final words before we let you off the hot seat? Oh, well, this hasn't been too hot, but I'll tell you, um, I just so proud. I see all the awards here and all that. And, you know, again, just to have this word, um, again, helps to stitch itself in our DNA as, as employees of, of this wonderful company. Well, it couldn't be done without you and your amazing team in finance. So thank you guys. Thanks for uh, getting out of your uh, uh, comfort zone a little bit and coming to do a <laughs> podcast episode interview with me. And that is Bill Woodman, our executive vice president of finance. And he's been going, so we like to call him billion dollar Bill. He's been going strong <laughs> with the, at the river since 2015. Thanks so much, Bill. My pleasure, Charlie. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Stories from the River. To check out more episodes, visit storiesfromtheriver.com. Join us again next week, and remember to like, rate, and subscribe to the podcast.